today we'll find some meteorites. I found one! Good! And there's more right here! It looks like they sprayed! Well, now what we will do is we'll document where all of them are and mark the spray pattern. The caliche the, from the ground, it was so hot that it melted right to it. Iron ore that's been sitting in the desert for millions of years will adapt its pole to the Earth's pole. So it'll have a pole facing north and a pole facing south. Now a meteorite, they, these ones haven't been here long. So their poles are going to be from whatever they were out in space. So what we'll do on the compass is we'll find north and we'll mark the north side just like that, of the meteorite. So when we get back to the lab, we can look at the poles so we can, we can prove that the poles are from space because they won't line up with the Earth pole. Each meteorite is perfectly choreographed and documented. each one. That way when we get back to the lab we can't get any of them mixed up. This is 8A. This is a beauty. It is just huge. And you can see that when it hit it was hot. Because the ground right here is literally melted into it. When it's coming through the air it's coming so fast that the friction heats it up and you can see the waves on it from the, from the molten metal just melting. Well we're back in the lab now and uh, it's a little less windy in here. We uh, have all our specimens out here in front of us, as you can see, nice and beautiful. We're missing one right here, and that's number three. We left it out there, but uh, it's no big deal. It's always good to leave a few. You know, you don't want to be greedy and take them all. So, But what we're going to do now is we're going to go over a few steps in order to show scientifically that these are meteorites. And... Uh, but we're just going to use simple logic to do this and observation. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to actually look at your meteorites. These meteorites were viewed by an eyewitness in 2005, striking the Earth. So they're fresh and they're they're fairly new. Now, newer meteorites you tend to find them on the surface because they haven't had a time to work their way down. Ones that have been sitting there for millions of years or even tens of thousands of years, the ground has a way of sinking them down in because they're heavier than the terrestrial rocks around them. So let's go ahead and just take a look at these and uh, you can see when these come in from outer space and start coming through the atmosphere, they heat up from the friction. And it actually heats up the outside so much that it starts to flow. And you can see the flow marks on these. You can see they, they came through and you can see the flow marks, the ripples just coming across. And another good indicator to look for here, it's not on all of them, but we have some that do have it, is see this? This is the ground around it. 
these were so hot that this actually baked the ground on so it's, it's hard like clay you know it's real hard on there now bigger meteorites are able to do this to even more of an extent you take for instance the one that struck central Arizona that one hit with such a force that actually created gra uh, glass around the impact so it heated the ground up so hot that it turned the soil into glass these ones heat it up enough to uh, turn it into baked clay. Now another thing you want to look for is things that just stand out from the normal. Now if you've seen earlier in the video you've seen a 2 and a 9 at different places. And right here is number 2 and this is number 9. And we didn't realize it until we got back to the lab but these are actually the same meteorite. What happened was this struck first, this end, and they were together. And when it struck, it struck with such a force that it broke off and went flying. And this one flipped over and was like that, and kind of like that, and this one ended up like this, because you can see where the north was marked here and the north was marked here. But they were several yards apart. Now, that just can't happen naturally. And if you look you know, how well they fit, you push them together like that, and look, they actually lock together to where they can stay suspended. You know, look, I'm shaking it, and it, see, it, it really holds together. And that's quite amazing, and that's one key factor that has proved that these are meteorites, because there's just no possible way that nature could reproduce that without going through that scenario. And another thing about these rocks here if you look the way they're broken they're real jagged you know and they're fresh now any rock that's been sitting out there for millions of years because there's no way for them to be where they're at unless they were sitting there for millions of years unless they came from space will be able to keep that sharp of an edge on them because you gotta figure with the wind and everything erosion will start to you know from the sand and everything will start to wear these edges off and they'll start to smooth them out. So after a while, you know, they won't they won't be able to hold together like now, that. Now, there are some people out there that say you can find meteorites by using a magnet. But the problem with doing that touch is touch a magnet to a meteorite, the pole of the magnet is so strong that it can change the pole on the meteorite. If you look, this meteorite here has absolutely no pole at all. But, if we take a magnet and we touch it to it, you know, just, you can see that it's magnetized, it sticks to it. So you know there's iron ore in there. But the problem with this is that now, you can see, it moves the compass. You can see that? It moves what the compass. What we're going to do is go ahead and start checking these. This one right here is number four. Now, if you look you can see there's absolutely no pole at all. Now some meteorites that were formed closer to the formation of the sun were so hot for so long that they didn't form poles. They just they don't have them. Or if they were heated up too much when they were coming through the atmosphere it's possible that the heat was able to penetrate far enough through them that it destroyed the poles. When iron gets over 1600 degrees, it loses its magnetism. Now, right here is number eight. If you look, this one has a nice pole. This is a big, thick one here. You can see when it uh, when it pulls, it's actually pulling towards the north because when you're using your compass on Earth, the compass always faces the north. So, you can see how they keep pushing away. This big one has multiple pulls all over it. See right there, it starts pulling towards it. Right there, it starts pulling. So that's north. What we'll go ahead and do is we'll, we'll mark some of these poles on here. So right here is a north. And we'll just mark the north side. So we can see how many different poles are in here. There's a pusher, so that's south. South. There's a south. Right See how that? Yep. 
right there we go see how it pulls like that well that's another north side right here just like that now I'll go ahead and flip it around push in push in there's a pole right there and we got another one right here Wow, look at that pole. There's one right here, too. Now, there's actually been some meteorites that have been found with over a hundred different poles on them. So, they really go through some crazy stuff up there in space. They really do. Well, I think we might have got them all. As you can see, right there's one. There's one, and there's one, and right here. So there, and this rock was facing this way, like this. So really, we should have a north right here on this side, if this was formed on the Earth. And there's really no reason for there to be this many poles on there if it was formed on the Earth. It would only have one here, and it would have one over here. It would pull here, or, excuse me, it would push here, and it would pull here. So that proves that this one here is a meteorite. Now, not all the little ones lose their poles. Right here is number five. And you can see, see how strong that is? That's pushing away right there. So that's the south side of it. And come around. Look at that. See how it pulls like that? Well, that's the north side. So we put a little star on here. Come around. And it's still still pulling from over here. See how it pushes away. And even pushes away on the top here. So there's there we go. <laughs> there's another one right there so as you can see this little rock right here has two different north sides so there's a pole going through it like this and there's a pole going through it like this now that's just not possibly possible to be formed that way on the earth which proves this one is a meteorite are one of my biggest passions in life you know, they're the building blocks of life itself. They form the galaxy. And I'm just happy to be able to share my knowledge that I've learned along the way with others and make things a little bit more simple. You know, things today are a little bit complex, and it's beautiful that I can show simple techniques in order for the average person to go out and use logic to find themselves some media rights. I hope this helps you go out in the field and find meteorites for yourself. And just remember, don't be greedy, leave some out there and more will sprout up. ...in what is happening on our Earth. These unidentified flying objects that appear to display unique characteristics, such as their speed, their rapid maneuvering and so on, must be studied in the interest of mankind.